so far in these tutorials, we've done what are called univariate analyses, where we estimate a parameter at a single voxel, and we do that for every voxel in the brain, for every condition that we have in our experiment. From these, we can contrast parameter estimates and generate statistical maps. We can do t-tests, we can do ANOVAs on those values. But with fMRI data in particular, we can also do some more interesting, sophisticated analyses, and one of them is called functional connectivity. Now, the name functional connectivity is a bit of a misnomer. All of it does is it calculates the correlation between the time series in a seed voxel, which we can pick somewhat arbitrarily. It can be based on an anatomical location or a contrast that we've done. and takes a correlation between that time course and the time course of every other voxel in the brain. The reason functional connectivity is a misnomer is because we really aren't directly talking about the connectivity between these voxels. We're only talking about the correlation in the time series. And we can't say anything about the direction or the causation between this voxel and another voxel that we've done a functional connectivity analysis on. But it's still interesting. It's still kind of cool, and we can use it to motivate further analyses. So, in AFNI, right now, what we're going to do here is just try to build our intuition about what's going on. These steps shouldn't be taken as doing a proper functional connectivity analysis. We're just going to do something kind of quick and dirty, and later on we'll actually do it the appropriate way. So right now, I'm using the AFNI Data 6 data set, which I just did in my previous uh, playlist. And so if you've already done that, you've already run the analysis, set the underlay as allruns.ft. Okay, so here we are, and you'll notice, if you've already done this other analysis, that we have our stats.ft data set, right? I'm just going to threshold this a little bit, uh, don't worry too much about it. And for this, I'm going to use the V minus A contrast that we had, visual minus auditory, and go back to one of these clusters that we had before, after thresholding it appropriately and doing some cluster correction. Okay, so here's the cluster I'm going to be working with. This one right here. And we are going to use the time series of this voxel. There's the peak at this cluster. And we are going to click on this FIM right here. And we're going to say that our ideal, or our seed time course, is going to be the time course of this voxel. So click on Edit Ideal, and click on Ideal equals Center. Okay, just copies and pastes that right above there. Then click on FIM and edit ideal and then write this ideal out. So let's call this auditory ideal.1D. Not strictly necessary, but it just outputs what that ideal time course is into a text file. And lastly, if we want to compute this on the fly, click on compute FIM and functional intensity correlation analysis. So click on that, it's going to generate a temporary data set that's been loaded into memory. And notice here now that this slider is now a correlation. So obviously we can't go above 1 or negative 1. And we're going to bump this threshold down a little bit. Let's just make it uh, 0.5, let's say. So look for any voxels which have a 0.5 correlation with that seed voxel that we tested. Let's make the outer range something a little bit nicer to see. Let's make it a maximum of 2. And maybe just one. Okay, there we go. And so this is what a functional connectivity map looks like. So if I click on any other voxel which has a very high correlation with this seed voxel, you're going to see a time series that looks very, very similar to what we just put in there. So let's say I click over here. And also, not surprisingly, we see high degrees of correlation between that and the bilateral area and the other part of the auditory cortex on the other side of the brain and also with some visual areas because it was a visual and auditory task. There were both components involved. So if I click over here and I look at the time course, it also looks very similar. If I click in some part of the brain which is totally unrelated, like a, a motor cortex area, for example, there's really no correlation. I could make this very, very liberal, but it would still not really show any active voxel surviving this threshold.
that's a functional connectivity analysis in very broad strokes. Again, we haven't done a lot of the necessary pre-processing to make it a really proper functional connectivity analysis, but that's the idea behind it. We simply take a seed region, which can be an individual voxel, or it can be an average time series of an entire cluster of voxels. And then we see at every other voxel in the brain, how well does the time course of that voxel correlate with our seed region of interest. Coming up, we're going to talk about how to do this with AFNI commands from the command line and to make it a more appropriate functional connectivity analysis.